Maybe you can tell how steep it is now. It just goes boom. Straight down the mountain. Hey everyone, it is Sunday, July the 8th, around 12.40 p.m., and this is my second weekend in a row hiking in Virginia. Before I tell you about the hike I'm doing right now, let me uh, tell you how I started the day, because I didn't take any videos of it. I drove towards Lynchburg and Amherst, Virginia and went west on US 60 to do a short peak bag up to Rocky Mountain, which is northwest of Mount Pleasant and Cold Mountain, which are popular hiking destinations. Rocky Mountain is actually the tallest peak in that area. So it's on many peak bagger lists, such as County High Point, Virginia 4,000 foot peaks, and also a top 50 prominence peak in the southeast. And that involved a long, tedious drive from the main highway on both a narrow asphalt road and then a few miles on a gravel road. It, when I got to the gap, salt log gap, I believe, I made the dumb decision to try the forest road up to a saddle which is only half a mile from the peak and that road was in horrible condition and honestly it would have been just as fast for me to hike and jog that given how slow I was going in the car. I gave up about halfway from the gap to the saddle so it ended up being about a mile or so from my car up to the peak and around 600 foot climb and past the saddle where uh, most uh, four wheel drives can make. The road was extremely rough and steep, but bagged the peak, took me around 35, 40 minutes and uh, kept driving west towards uh, I-81. So let's talk about my main hike of the day to Elliott Knob in George Washington National Forest. Elliott Knob is located in the west central Allegheny Mountains of Virginia near the West Virginia border. It is close to Buffalo Gap and about 15 miles west of Staunton, Virginia. At 4,463 feet, it is the high point of the North Mountain Range and also the high point of Augusta County and is the third most prominent peak in Virginia with over 2,000 feet of prominence, which puts it on a couple other prominence type lists. I don't actually have a map for the area, so I'm relying on two posts from Hiking Upward, a site I contribute to. Check it out if you haven't. There are four ways to approach the summit, which is pretty cool. If you wanna revisit the summit, that means you can try a new way each time. The shortest direction is from Cold Springs on the west side of the mountain, but that's actually the farthest from the main highway. The North Mountain Trail runs across the height of North Mountain and Elliott Knob from north to south. Uh, either way is around nine miles and under 2000 feet of elevation gain. I'm actually doing the hardest way, I believe, from Virginia Highway 42. It starts around 2,000 feet of elevation and the elevation change to the top of Elliott Knob is about 2,400 feet. And on hiking upward, the gain for this hike is listed around 2,800 feet. And at just under four and a half miles, that means that you're averaging 600 to 700 feet per mile, which is tough. Currently I'm following the Falls Hollow Trail which initially follows this forest road, eventually is a trail along Falls Hollow Run with a couple small waterfalls. And then the last mile or so is on a very steep and exposed forest road to the summit. The actual summit is cleared and then has an old lookout tower. So I'm looking forward to getting up there. 
It is perfect blue skies today, so the visibility should be fantastic for the middle of July. And the temperatures are gonna be in the low 70s at the top. So uh, I think next stop may be a couple of those small waterfalls on Falls Hollow, uh, but the water is not looking very high today, so they could look very pitiful. This is the second waterfall I've encountered on Falls Hollow Run. The first waterfall was about 15 minutes ago. Not worth a video clip. It was only about five or six feet high and had really bad sun glare. So I kept moving. This one's a little bit taller, a little bit more interesting. It's hard to really give a height, maybe about 15, 20 feet in total cascades, but the amphitheater of rocks around it it def definitely makes it a cooler spot. While hiking along Falls Hollow Run, uh, what comes to mind is the regional differences in naming conventions between uh, our states and just general areas. Uh, creek, river, and fork are pretty ubiquitous in the southeast. But uh, in Virginia, a lot of these smaller creeks and bigger creeks will have run as their name, like this one. In North Carolina, you'll see a lot of the times branch for smaller streams and prong for larger streams. And I don't really recall many branches or prongs in Virginia. Just something to keep in mind, something cool that you just see different names depending on the state for the same type of waterway. This uh, Little Falls is immediately upstream of the last one and is one I actually remember from the pictures on hiking upward. Again, not a significant waterfall, probably around eight to 10 feet high, but uh, looks more like a regular waterfall than the other two. Now on that final stretch, climbing the forest road to the summit. This is easily the toughest section of the hike. The uh, first two thirds of the Falls Hollow Trail only covered about 1,000 feet in elevation change. So this last section climbs roughly 1,400 feet in less than one and a half miles on this steep exposed gravel road. So definitely a very steep hike by any standards, but uh, thankfully the tread is very good and it's relatively short. This does bring to mind the most recent review for Elliot Knob on hiking upward by someone who said this was one of their favorite hikes in Virginia because it resembled hikes in Southern California where they were from and that it was a steep summit ascent, which I guess I sort of agree with. The hikes in Virginia, I don't think are very hard for the most part, but I have hiked in Southern California and also done quite a few hikes in the Cascades of Washington. And yes, they're steep, but for the most part, they follow actual trails to the top of those mountains. So this is a unappealing option for me. So I don't quite understand why a person likes this hike so much because of this. So, if they happen to be watching the video, I invite that person down to North Carolina where we have quite a few ascent type hikes straight up a mountain on trails that are just as tough as this climb, if not tougher. I think you'll enjoy it. I know it's a Always hard to tell in a video unless you have a good reference landmark or trees that point straight up from the slope. This is a ridiculous gradient. Wow. 
may have underestimated it a little bit. It is straight up. I'm guessing once I go back and check it, it's going to be probably around 1,300, 1,400 feet per mile, which is just insane for uh, the Appalachian Mountains, at least in the southeast. Almost to the summit, rounding a bend with a nice rock outcrop view towards the south and southwest. This peak towards the south is Hogback Mountain, which is on the Virginia 4000 list. I originally planned on adding this to the hike, but now I'm not so sure because I'm tired. But uh, if I did, it's only about a half a mile um, out and back each way with minimal elevation gain. But really nice view towards the southwest of a good example of the valleys in the Allegheny Mountains. But uh, I don't have the USGS quad for this direction, so I can't really tell you what uh, the valley is, what creek runs through it. But in the distance there, those peaks a few rows back are West Virginia. Wow, I underestimated you, Elliot Knob. That final climb on the road was a real ass kicker. Probably around 1,500 feet straight up in 1.2, 1.3 miles, completely exposed to the sun, hardly any shade until you get to the top with some small sections of spruce. But I can't imagine that on a hotter day. Rain and thunderstorms came through Friday and Saturday dropping the temperatures and clearing out the humidity. It's in the low 70s, mid 70s today. This was in the mid 80s with 50 to 60% relative humidity. That would have been really rough because it's not high enough elevation to get you out of the high temperatures of the valley. Anyways, it took me around two hours and 20 minutes to get up here in just under four and a half miles. But uh, you really slow down on that last mile or so. And I used to think that the Three Ridges Wilderness Loop from the Ty River was the toughest hike I'd done in Virginia by far. And this is probably tied with it. Even though it's five or six miles shorter, the elevation gain per mile is just up there with that climb out of the Ty River to Three Ridges Mountain. And I haven't done the Priest from the Ty River that's also really difficult. It's around 3,000 feet in four miles from the Ty River. So if you're looking for a good summit hike, this is one of those. Definitely compares to North Carolina, but not as scenic because the toughest part of the hike is all gravel road. And the toughest hikes in North Carolina are mostly trails through some tree coverage. So the views right now are not that good big grassy clearing at the summit. Trees are kind of obscuring the open views, but the fire tower is directly behind the camera. So let's go check it out. Here is the Elliott Knob Lookout Tower. Chain link fence is open, and it seems like the cab is open too, so I can get up to the top. This version was built in 1948. There's an older version of the tower built in the 1920s, but it was torn down and rebuilt and finished in 1948. It stands at 30 feet above the ground and seems to be a live-in cab style with a full wraparound catwalk. So let's go up to the top. Fantastic views from the Elliott Knob Lookout Tower and really tremendous visibility today during the second weekend of July. Very thankful that I chose to do this with low humidity. I'm going to start with the narrow western view of the Allegheny Mountains towards West Virginia because I can't pick them out. So I'm just going to gloss over them <laughs> and look north towards some of the Allegheny Mountains of Virginia and West Virginia, which I also can't pick out. 
now really the highlight for me is I can see many of the peaks of the Blue Ridge Escarpment in central Virginia. I'm looking northeast here towards the upper Shenandoah Valley. This is where the North River and, Little, and Middle River meet to form the South Fork Shenandoah River. And you can see the beginnings of Massanutten Mountain in the foreground. And then everything you can see here towards this point are the Shenandoah Mountains in Shenandoah National Park. I-64 cuts through Rockfish Gap somewhere around here that divides uh, Skyline Drive from the Blue Ridge Parkway and divides the National Park from George Washington National Forest. Due east are some of the highest peaks of central Virginia. On the left are Humpback Mountain and Wintergreen Mountain. And then this rounded peak is Three Ridges Mountain in the Three Ridges Wilderness. The Appalachian Trail drops off that mountain way down into the Ty River and then climbs steeply back up to the Priest. And these high peaks right here are the religious range. The rightmost peak is Main Top Mountain. On the other side of Main Top is Spy Rock. Then the escarpment continues south where I drove through earlier. Rocky Mountain is this indiscriminate peak. And I can't really pick out Mount Pleasant, Cold Mountain, or Bald Mountain. But just trust me, US 60 cuts right through this area. Then the peaks drop quite a bit in this section. I'm not sure what's around there. Then they pick back up again towards the southeast. And the biggest peak is actually Apple Orchard Mountain, where I hiked last weekend. And then the peaks of Otter are clearly visible. On the left is Flat Top, and on the right is Sharp Top. Really incredible views from the Elliott Knob Lookout Tower. It's around 5.30 and I'm getting very close to the car. I've been hiking around four hours and 45 minutes, give or take. But I actually spent a very long time at the summit. The time just flew by. I think I spent about 50 minutes on top of the tower when I got up there. There was uh, another guy already up there, and he's actually uh, lives pretty close to the to this peak, and he was helping me identify some of the mountains that I couldn't quite pick out. And we had a good chat, and then a group of three guys came after he left. Had a good talk with one of them. Next thing you know, it's almost four o'clock, and uh, up at the tower, the temperatures and the breeze were phenomenal felt like it was 68 degrees and it was hard to leave but eventually you have to go back down and the road was not as difficult going down as I figured it would be I think there's a tick in my sorry Ugh. I've had to brush off a few ticks on the way down Virginia always seems to have more ticks than North Carolina in my experience anyways I don't know the exact mileage of the hike, but going by hiking upward, it's between eight and a half and nine miles and a solid four to five hour day hike with over 2,800 feet of elevation gain. And I started the day, it was okay, you know, it's following this forest road. And then I started to hate it, 
when I got onto the open exposed forest road climb to the top, but then all of my anger was washed away on top of that tower. Beautiful day, beautiful summit. Couldn't have asked for more. So I highly recommend it. Uh, definitely gonna do an update of the hiking upward post for this. And maybe in the future, I'll come back and try one of the other trails. So I hope you enjoyed it and see you guys next weekend, probably.